All right, so my refrigerator, and this is a Whirlpool brand refrigerator. It's uh, six years old, I think. Um, the light doesn't always work. So you can see right there. Um, that's what happens sometimes, and sometimes it works fine. If I push the button, sometimes it comes on. So um, what we're going to try to do is fix this today. Um, not sure how this comes apart. Never took it apart before. Let's see if this just pops off. I thought there would be a little hole or something to pry it off with. I don't see any screws holding it in place. All right, let me. Uh, let me see if I can figure this out, but what I think is going on is there's a circuit board in here and the resistor or capacitor or something has gone out of spec and that's why it doesn't always turn on. So, it's, it's in a state where sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So let me pause this, see if I can figure out how to get this out. Okay, so you just have to pry it. Now we need to be careful because this thing has power. So, hopefully I don't get electrocuted here. Alright. So, that's how it comes out. It's just got four keepers and a recess in the roof. So let me continue getting this all the way out. Okay. So with the unit out, this comes out, it's just clipped in by four little clippies. It comes out like this. And I was expecting to see something burned up or, or broken or something or puffed up, like one of these caps puffed up. I'm not seeing anything. So I'm going to have to get my super eyes to look at this and check the resistors and capacitors with the meter. Um, but this, is, uh, this side here is the side that points down. And you can see the four LEDs that, um, that light up to illuminate the the box, the inside of the box. So uh, let me see if I can figure out what's wrong what's wrong with the circuit and maybe it can be repaired. Okay, um, after carefully looking over the board it is apparent that R15 has burnt. Um, can't tell what it is. Um, it's a resistor. I, th I think um, it's going to be hmm. well. Let me let me look around on the line. Okay, um, this R15 is on the side with the LEDs, and that's going to be bad. You can see that it's darkened. Let me zoom in a little bit. Um, online it's um, suggested that it's 172 ohms uh, and <clears throat> to me this board is designed intentionally to fail because this is a common problem apparently so um, I'm going to try putting a 1000 ohm in there because it seems like this is severely uh, out of spec and is intentionally done that way so that this board will fail and that you'll have to buy a new uh, light assembly which is over $50 which is ridiculous. So um, I'm going to try, my first attempt is to put a 1000 ohm resistor there. Um, now that may cause the R17 or something else to overload and burn up, but uh, I don't know. I, without a schematic, I can't make a, a educated guess. I just have to make a guess from my heart, I guess. You know, this is how I feel about it. So let me put a 1000 ohm uh, resistor in there and, uh, and uh, we'll test it and see what happens. Okay, so um, this had some sort of coating on it uh, to where I couldn't go through it, so I had to scrape it off. But after scraping, um, I found out that these two sides, these two resistors on this side are tied together. Um, and this one ohmed, it, ohmed out to be 90 ohms, and this one ohmed out to be 160. Um, I'm going to put a 470 ohm across the across this burnt one instead of a 1000 ohm instead of a 1k ohm um 
and just to see what happens i want to put a larger resistor value because i suspect that this value was designed that way in order to fail maybe i'm paranoid i don't know but you know they're selling these parts and and they should be class action suited or something because everybody's having this problem with these uh, boards so i'm going to jump a resistor across here uh 470 ohm and uh, we'll see if that fixes the problem uh it's a one quarter watt <clears throat> which should be heftier than these little guys. I would think these are 1 8 or 1 16 watt. I, I don't honestly know. Um, but that's the plan, and let's give it a shot. Okay, so this is what I did. Um, I took a 470 ohm, and I attached it to one of the legs of the Q2 transistor and uh, bridged it across uh, to the R15 after removing the R15. So I'm ready to plug this in and see if it's going to work. Um, if it doesn't, then that just means the resistor value I chose was a bad choice. And I'll have to come down in value. But I suspect it will work. We're going to find out right now. Okay, so with a 470 ohm, obviously it doesn't work. I need to get back uh, to the right value. So um, I will remove this and replace the... Uh, resistor with something closer to 170 and see how it goes okay um i didn't have anything near 170 so um in addition to the 470 that i had already put on here i added a 270 um, those two in parallel give me a resistance of about 170 so let's see if that works okay so now with the um two resistors in there Ah, same exact thing. But you have to kind of tween it. It messed up once. Definitely working better though, right? All right, I'm going to take this out one more time and look at those capacitors. Uh, but definitely that resistor was a problem. Um, now I can't get it to flicker. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna consider replacing capacitors since we did get it to flicker one time, and uh, I'll be back. Okay, so the capacitors that this board has, this is a 3.3. Let me use the pointer. This is a 3.3, 450 volt. Why it's 450 volt, I couldn't tell you. This is uh, looks to be just a full wave rectified on 120. So 450, not sure, but um, I'm going to change this out with a 4.7, uh, 200 volt. And these two guys are 50, uh, 100, 100 microfarad and 50 volts. So I have these exact guys. I'll replace those. But this one I'm going to put a little bit larger. I'm going to put a 4.7. Um, 200 volt. I don't, I don't know why they went 450 volt on this. Not sure. Uh, unless this board can be used in a range of voltages. Um, but for my application, it will always just be 110. So, um, let me swap those out and we'll see how it goes. Okay. So with the two capacitors replaced, um, the two 100 microfarad capacitors replaced and the 3.3 replaced with a 4.7, It takes longer to come on, but it comes on pretty much every time. So the 3.3 capacitor probably should have been left in there. Um, let me see. It's strange. It takes a little bit longer to come up, doesn't it? Well, I don't know. Works every time, though. So, do I want to replace that? Put the 3.3 back in there? Or do I want to leave it like this? Well, let me see. So, if I close the door and I open it, it comes up kind of slow. 
you know what I'm gonna leave it that way for now um, but if you guys do this and you decide to replace capacitors probably leave it at 3.3 um, that's it for this video I think thanks for watching